Let me tell you what your brothers and sisters go through in the streets of New York, in Philadelphia, in Atlanta, in Tennessee. If your child tells you that they want to be a girl when they're biologically a boy. If your child tells you they want to be a boy, but they are biologically a girl, you are not allowed to disagree with your child. If you disagree with your child and your child goes to school and the child tells the teacher or the counselor or the nurse or the social worker that I want to be a girl, they can remove your child from your home. It's called gender-based discrimination and gender-based child abuse. So I'm seeing when I look at Barbados, and I'm looking at the Inter-American Development Bank, and I'm looking at the Barbados Family Planning Association, and I'm looking at this new child protective law that they're trying to introduce into Barbados, and I can see the writing on the wall. You will be the next casualty. You will be the next casualty in the global transgenderization war against African children. It is population control. It is nothing else. And the other thing you better understand, not only is this a war for population control, this is a war for the legalization of pedophilia. I need you to understand this. This is a war for the legalization of pedophilia. And I want you to understand the two movements are related. They work together in the dark. And I want you to understand the logic and rationale. It goes like this. If the Barbadian people allow the Barbadian government to say it is legal for a child under the age of 18 to decide they want to transform themselves into the opposite gender, the pedophile movement is looking at that, and the pedophile movement is saying, if a 12-year-old Barbadian girl can decide to reassign her gender to that of a boy at 12, doesn't that also mean she's old enough to decide to have six at 12? If a nine-year-old Barbadian boy is allowed to undergo sexual surgery to become a girl at nine, doesn't that also mean that at nine years old, he's old enough to decide if he want to have sex with a 25-year-old? Or old enough to decide he want to have sex with a 45-year-old? Or old enough to decide he want to have sex with a 65-year-old? I'm telling you right now, and you will live to see the proof of my words. After they push transgenderism on your children, they are then going to push sexual emancipation on your children. You don't believe me. I want to read you something really quick. First of all, is this information any good to you, brothers and sisters? Are you learning about what they're doing to our children? This is an assault on African life around the world, brothers and sisters. Why do you think Kamala Harris, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, just came back from Africa, threatened East African presidents with the elimination and termination of American aid if you don't make your country safe for gay marriage and transgender identity. Why does a government care? Why does a government care how another culture decides to define what a family is? Why do you care about how another culture decides to define marriage? You know why they care? I have to introduce transgenderism into every Caribbean island. I have to introduce transgenderism into every African country. I have to introduce transgenderism into every black community because only if I can brainwash the children into becoming a transgender, I never have to worry about any more black babies being born. 